New documents have been released about Reza Zarab's corruption, which reveal the complex relations of the Zarab family with some officials in Iran, Turkey, and the United States. Event 24, the Akrab Corruption and Organized Crime Reporting Institute, a consortium of research, media, and judicial centers in Eastern Europe, the Caucasus, Central Asia and Central America, uses the 2019 U.S. Freedom of Information Act to increase over 750,000 banking transactions. Details of confidential communications and other documents based on interrogations the United States obtained from Reza Zarab in 2016 and published some of them. In its report, the agency analyzed the data obtained and included it with interviews and exclusive reports of Turkish interrogations and other information gathered from the Middle East and Europe. According to the agency, in 2008 Adam Karahan was hired to transport billions of dollars, and his first shipment was a suitcase full of cash and gold, and he later transferred money to various companies through bank transactions. All of this money has also been transferred to help Iran circumvent U.S. sanctions. Confessions of Reza Zarab In an exclusive interview with the Kurt House and Akrup News Services, Karahan said that the operation was led by Reza Zarab, who assured him that he did not need to worry about any of the Turkish officials. Karahan said in the interview, Zarab has assured him that the government is behind them and when he doubts the statement, Zarab said be sure, you will see for yourself. The accomplice of Reza Zarab The report says that in fact, Zarab was right, and five years later, the Istanbul police filed a lawsuit against high-ranking Turkish government officials in court, and all of these government officials repeated Karahan's words. In a U.S. court in 2017, Reza Zarab himself untied the knot of an international conspiracy theory, saying he had used the state-owned Hulk Bank for what U.S. investigators called a global fraud. In the hearings of Reza Zarab, he cited Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan as the one who ordered the illegal trade. Zarab claims that former senior Turkish officials, including the country's economy minister, have received large amounts of bribes in return for their activities. This process, which lasted eight years, eventually turned Zarab into a wealthy businessman before the age of 30. He is estimated to have transferred at least $20 billion from 2010 to 2015. In 2016, a report from the U.S. Treasury Department showed that Karahan had told Turkish officials that Zarab had added 8% to the value of his services, deducting 4% as his salary and 4% for political officials. According to reports, only $800 million has been hit in three years, and tens of millions of dollars have been bribed to Turkish politicians. According to the report, Erdogan also tried to support Zarab in 2016 and 2017, when Zarab was on a trip to Miami and was caught by the FBI. The Turkish government has lobbied hard against Washington and tried to silence the case. Erdogan himself called the U.S. president and demanded Zarab's release, but to no avail. Zarab was eventually convicted of fraud and money laundering and became a witness in exchange for courtesy. His court hearings helped trap Hulk Bank CEO Mehmet Hakan Adela. Reza Zarab meets with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. In a lengthy telephone interview with the Institute, Karahan claimed that former Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and a close aide to Erdogan who worked for the Turkish government were heavily involved in Zarab's case. Apparently, he and Zanjani circumvented the sanctions on Iran. He said Zarab also had a bodyguard in 2006 before engaging in heavy money laundering operations and was involved in a wide range of smuggling. According to Karahan, Zarab took currency and gold to countries such as Iran, Russia, and the UAE, and had many fictitious money laundering companies in his own name. According to Event 24, Reza Zarab was born in 1983 in Tehran and grew up in Istanbul. He moved to Dubai with his family in 1999 and returned to Istanbul three years later to set up a family business in Turkey. In letters to Ahmadinejad and the central bank governor, he described his family business as having half a century of foreign exchange experience. During interrogations, 
U.S. officials obtained electronic copies of the letters and recorded them as confessions from Zarab to begin covert activities in the case. This year is the year of economic jihad, and Zarab's family considers it their national and moral duty to declare their readiness and willingness to cooperate in any way in implementing the country's anti-sanctions and monetary policies, Zarab wrote in the same letter. Karahan said Ahmadinejad was a close friend of Zarab's father. Of course, in one of the court hearings, in response to a question about how they directly coordinated their activities with the governor of the Central Bank of Iran, Zarab said that the coordination of the hearings was done through my father. In response to how he learned foreign exchange business, he also said that it was my father's main profession. Hossein Zarab raises Arab's father was a businessman close to the Iranian government. In October 2012, he posed with several senior IRN officials at the opening of the Kavetik Mestil Industries Company in northwestern Iran. Ahmadinejad personally approved the project, and Iranian news agencies reported its inauguration. Karahan said Reza Zarab had a meeting with Ahmadinejad in Iran in 2011. He said that we had cash with us in euros, dollars, and dirhams and we were staying in a hotel in Tehran. Reza called me and said that he was going to have a meeting with Ahmadinejad. They had a 20-minute session. Karahan has also made allegations against Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He said that our business could not run without bribes and bribes were exchanged wherever there was a smash. The report mentions the role of Hossein Zarab, Shahin Kabaz, Reza's mother, Shida, Reza's sister, Ahad Kabaz D.I., and his uncle Mohammad Zarab in money laundering projects. According to these reports, Al Nafi Company, which is the exchange office of Hossein Zarab in Dubai, was once fined $9.1 million by OFAC for financial transactions to Iran in 2013, but Hussein stopped it. In 2014, Hossein Zarab managed to reduce his fine to $2.3 million, and OFAC was satisfied with the documents provided by Reza's father. The documents state that Al Nafi is a small company in the UAE that cannot have financial transactions of this size and is not able to pay all these fines at all. Court documents show Hussein's Arab did not even pay the reduced fine, but the United States has never questioned or charged him during that time. Some have claimed that this was part of the Obama administration's policy of negligence in Iran. One of the reports on the money that was transferred in exchange for the imposition of sanctions said that before the change of sanctions on Iran in July 2013, it had made a huge profit. Most of Iran's money was deposited in a special account in Hulk Bank, which is transferred to Zarab's account in one step. Adela, a senior Hulk Bank official, was facilitating the transactions in U.S. prisons at the time. After Adela's release and return to Turkey, he was elected head of one of Istanbul's largest exchange offices. It is said that Zarab used to buy gold wherever he could find it. Karahan and others also carried the money and gold to Dubai, the center of the world's gold markets. Cash from the sale of gold was also used for Iran's interests in the global economy, which was unable to trade directly due to sanctions. Karahan claims that he was one of the 22 members of the team that moved at least 200 tons of gold for the hammer. He said, 20 suitcases were carried by 10 people, each of which contained 20 to 30 kilos of gold. Each suitcase had a $500 reward for them, which was about $1,000 a day. The report claims that as Iran's need for money increased, so did Zarab's gold trade. In January 2013, Zarab informed Turkish police that he had sold 1.5 tons of gold worth $65 million in an exchange to an Iranian buyer named Bobak Zanjani. The gold was sent from the Omani Gold Mining Company, a company based in Ghana, but the plane carrying the gold was forced to land at another airport due to bad weather, and the shipment was confiscated by Turkish authorities. Banking data show that a fictitious company in the UK, DJ Max Trading, made four payments to Omaniya in December 2012. In the same month, gold was traded with Zanjani. DG Max financial transactions are deposited directly into the accounts of several companies managed by Zarab. Partnership of Reza Zarab and Bobak Zanjani
the relationship between Zarab and Zanjani has also been one of the issues considered in Zarab courts. In a New York court, Zarab cited Zanjani as the source of the gold and said that he had given us one and a half tons of gold from Ghana so that we could melt it through our companies in Turkey. According to Event 24, Zarab has rejected the partnership with Zanjani, but Karahan has said something else. He claimed that Zanjani and Zarab were partners in everything. Erdogan's son-in-law, Barat al Bayruk, the current Turkish Treasury Minister, allowed Hulk Bank to cooperate with Zarab at the time, but was not charged in Zarab's case. Prior to entering politics, al Bayruk worked with Zarab as CEO of Selik Holding. According to U.S. court documents, Zarab and his business partner, Hossein Agajani, emptied all Iranian accounts at Active Bank, a subsidiary of Kelik Holding Bank, and then offered services to the Central Bank and the Nation of Iran Exchange. This was at a time when Iran was unable to withdraw its money in Turkey without violating U.S. sanctions. The report also cites al Bayrak as having links to Trump's son-in-law, Gerard Kouchner, and said that in a private meeting, Trump had promised to do everything in his power to stop the Hulk Bank case. In this regard, Donald Trump has talked with both the Treasury Department and the Department of Justice about the Hulk Bank case. Under pressure from Democratic Sen. Wyden, Sen. Treasury Secretary Steve Manich admitted that he had met with Al Bayrak three times. In February 2018, Manichair told the Congressional Committee that they had talked about the Hulk Bank in those meetings. In the end, it is said that all the dimensions of Zarab's illegal business activities were never identified, but the evidence shows that in the first four months of 2013 alone, Zarab companies made a profit of $2.5 billion. Zarab has registered in its office only a few multimillion dollar accounts for the transfer of olive oil, frozen meat, and coconut oil, but later told the court that none of these accounts were real and that all of them were a cover for the transfer of money.